I remember when I was 12, my parents and I, we took a tour at the Walt Disney Animation Studio in Orlando. And it was wonderful to actually see an animation studio. But however, it was apparent that the secrets that they have was definitely elusive to the outsider. You know, because here as a tourist, we were behind a plexiglass. So that plexiglass was pretty much like a solid metaphor for like that veil is mystery. But um, so flashing forward, you know, I, I still wanted to learn animation, but just it was impossible at the moment, at the time. Because in order to learn, you would have to go to out-of-state um university or a private college or even overseas and it was virtually impossible for me at the time earlier last year or so that i um started to take animation courses and i'm i'm telling you i have seen so many online animation courses but there was always so that veil of mystery flash forward um to this year, I came across AMB's um, YouTube channel, AMB Real Animators um, Training, and I was blown away. I just couldn't believe, you know, the knowledge that he was putting out there, the lectures that he was doing. It just pretty much ripped that veil of mystery off the face of the earth. And the thing that really sets his um, archive, his online to, you know, lectures and stuff apart from everyone else is the basics. That's the one thing that a lot of the books, a lot of the online animation stuff lack was the extreme basics, you know. And when I started on that archive, I started understanding the spacing, the timing the arcs, the um, slow in, the slow out. And with each exercise, it builds up on each other. And as a result, I start s seeing, you know, the arcs. I start understanding and timing things in my head. And it was just so fascinating. And because of that, it just helped revive, you know, my lifelong desire of learning animation. And it just made me so happy that I'm able to pursue and to dream of becoming an animator. So thank you. So, are you going to join the library? Welcome, welcome once again to another edition of AMB, Animation Livestream. It's cool to be uh, one week uh, over completed of the new year. How are you all doing? Are you all uh, sticking to those uh, trademark uh, New Year's resolutions? Uh, whatever they are, animation related or not, or have you come to the realization that every moment's a new year and really it doesn't matter uh, if you change direction so long as you know where you want to go um, right so today is the day where we go and look at your work in the global AMB animation real animator community on Facebook but before we do that you know the deal. Uh, I like to begin these streams with some eye-opening insights into how you can uh, make a copy of a random character, but ways to look at it, ways, things to look for, shape simplification, construction, silhouette. So we like to begin with that. Uh, so I, I hand that over to you, lovely people in the chat, if you want to suggest a character for me to Google I don't care what it is so long as it's got some kind of hand-drawn appeal to it I don't want to take a CG design um, I want to keep within the hand-drawn uh, 2d demographic uh, so 
suggest that character to me I will go I will Google it and I will do a breakdown for you all and tell you the things that I see as I do it so while uh, you guys uh, contribute to the chat in that regard um, you can oh I'm gonna say a few hellos to you uh, feel free to drop me a like if you or a subscribe or whatever it is <laughs> if you want uh, so we've got Cameron Allen Davidson black good to see you sir uh, Garrett Masons how are you Dylan draws good to have you online copper star hello to you not so familiar in the chat with you sir but if you have uh, been here before then excuse my memory lapse good to have you online srjv how are you octavio velasquez um thank you for purchasing the uh 56 part animation seminar series in the real animated training library um i double checked and and made sure that you are able to access that archive so you should be able to but if you have any issues please do let me know um my new year and christmas was great red fox i hope yours was too okay we have got no suggestions um for a character to break down in the chat come on guys give me a suggestion uh if i do not get a suggestion i guess i will just have to start looking at uh, dylan draws is normally always giving me suggestions i don't know what's happened there uh, <laughs> but if i do not get a suggestion i will um i will just uh start looking at your work uh so let's give you 10 seconds okay 10 good seconds um and i'll give you okay i'll tell you what i'll go and do 20 press-ups or 25 press-ups how about ghost in the shell bateau okay since that's the one um we'll do it we'll do okay i'll do 25 press-ups and give you all another chance to give me another suggestion okay while i do that okay let's make this a little bit of fun right a little bit of fun so give me some suggestions while i knock these out all right guys Let's do this. <laughs> Let's have some fun on today's stream. Right. How are we all doing with those suggestions? What have we got? Awesome. Octavio, we've got the boatman from Klaus. That's interesting, because I don't really like Klaus. But there's no doubt some good designs in there. Um, Chanticleer from Rockadoodle. That's fun. And Bato from Ghost in the Shell. So only two more suggestions when I did that. <laughs> okay. Well, let me Google the Boatman from Klaus. Because that's something a little bit newer. Um, he was quite a fun character, to be fair. I did eventually watch the movie. Um... There's some nice expressions of him. I'm trying to find the original artwork. Um, Boatman Morgans. Or is he just Boatman? Um, I don't know if this is an original one. I actually want to do him, actually, because he's something different but i don't know if these are original drawings of him no these are just fan art okay i'm gonna try i'm gonna try and type original art Mm, 
man, it's difficult to find any original. It would have been a good character to do, actually, but there's too much deviant art stuff here. Kind of defeat the purpose. Okay, his name is Mogans. Okay, both Mogans. Mogans. Klaus. Hmm. Here's an ori some original animation drawings of him. That's good. Yeah, these are nice drawings. See more. Okay, just bear with me. Bear with me. These look like notes, animator notes. No, those are deviant art stitches. Oh dear. You'd think there'd be some good images of this guy. That's really annoying, actually. Um. Okay, I'm just going to save this image. I'm going to do this image. This is from an animation frame. We're spending a lot of time looking around for this thing. And I think I can't afford to waste any more time. We are 11 minutes into the stream. Okay, so I'm going to do this image. It's kind of cut off. I can't see his glove design, so I don't really know what his gloves are like. So let's just do this. Okay, right. Um change my screen change my microphone hopefully you'll be able to see that so this is a still from the this is a from a from line art from animation line art it's a nice drawing um, i knew there would be some nice drawings in this film which is why i wanted to do it um, so let's first look at his silhouette study right first I'm going to I'm going to break this down in a different way. I feel like being a little bit adventurous. So I'm going to put a triangle here, right? Then I'm going to put a triangle um Yeah, I'm going to keep that triangle going there like that. That's interesting. Yeah. Then I'm going to put a negative triangle here like this. I'll shade that in like that. Then I'm going to have this coming down here like that. And another um, negative triangle here like this. Right? Okay. So you're thinking, well, isn't it funny? Look, isn't this funny? Right? Now, I don't know if this is just me being a, an, an art critic or a, a, a over-enthusiastic uh art student looking for um, looking for anything to write bullshit about. I'm not sure that they actually thought about this, but he's a boatman, right? And I've just taken the shape of his silhouette hair like this in its rawest form, okay? In its rawest form, I've taken the shape of the guy's silhouette, right? You're going to see how it's a silhouette. And it looks kind of like a boat. Now, I don't know if that's just coincidence. But this is what I love about the, you know, you can't set over like second guess the thought that goes into decent character design. Now, I may have my problems with this movie, but the character design is very, very nice in it. Right. So I'm not going to pretend just because I don't really enjoy the movie. Let me just put my phone on silent that I'm that I don't respect the the artwork right now I'm going to come in here and, and start breaking into this um, and and seeing what I can get out of this silhouette further right I'm going to spend my time on this one right so then we're going to come this should come out more like this right out here like that 
I'm going to really, really spend my time on this one, right? So we've got this, and this one is more out like, yeah, in line with that coming out like this. Now, I am not may end up not getting this 100% accurate as I'm doing this. So now this is coming offline there, perfect. Coming down in here like that. There's another triangle here like this. You see, this is the way I like to study if I'm going to make any references or copies of other people's artwork. Because I like to see what I can learn about the silhouettes and the shapes. Because one of the laws that we talk about in animation, one of the most overlooked laws, one of the, the two of the laws that I feel people think they understand, but they really have no idea about them uh, and just how difficult they are to do well. No matter, there are many... Um, great animators out there but when it comes to designing their own characters or creating things that haven't been pre-designed for them uh, their work kind of sucks and I used to I, I would it actually until quite recent times I think I fitted into that bracket I'm not afraid to say because it's these are the laws these are the last cons like the law that's why like I, they're very very towards the end these laws because therefore once you know you're really starting to find your place uh as a true real animator um and what are these laws i'm speaking of i'm speaking of appeal everybody thinks they know the word appeal so appeal just means make it appealing right or exaggeration, right? People know what exaggeration is. You don't have to be an artist to know, kind of understand what exaggeration is. And I think people just don't understand or explore these laws enough. They just have like preconceived ideas about them, um, which then lead to them being the most overlooked uh, laws yet they're the ones that are the real secret sauce to to what makes work good and you know a really good the standout work you know so what I'm doing here is is I'm really looking at the outline silhouette now i may be placing things in the wrong place here as i go to fill it in right um but as i said i can copy stuff and draw stuff that's accurate to my heart's content there's no challenge in it for me so i'm not so interested in doing that right i've showed you how to do that many times before what i'm now interested in is as I do these drawings for you, I also do them for me as well. Um, because I could just systematically break it into separate shapes and construction shapes and make a very accurate recording of it uh, and impress you all with that. But I think this is far more informative, not only for you, but for me as well. I get something out of this too. I learn about um, how to get my characters better silhouettes and better shapes by studying lots of silhouettes and shapes okay i'm gonna keep that i'm not gonna do away with that i'm gonna put that in yellow let's just make that that blue color for now so can you see how that original boatman style shape so it's true here you look at his hat i i i i'm i don't think i'm reaching too much with this theory here you look at the guy's hat here right it's almost like this is a boat and this is a sail of a boat, right? I think they've really, I mean, again, I can't guarantee that this is the mentality, but I think they've really gone in there with all of these, you know, shapes, these triangular. I mean, it's that very European, Sergio Pablo is one of the best in the world. He's from Italy, I believe, a very European, harsh shape style, but it's got that 
feel of it. It's got those feels of like sails and boats and things like that. So I don't think that I'm reaching with this theory at all um, about uh, this character's uh, having a looking like a boat. Right now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take this silhouette and I'm going to start filling it with with the actual character right so i'm gonna just make my brush a little bit smaller here right so hair is gonna be the guy's head right so i'm gonna put his hat in this shape there's gonna be a little circle along here now here's where the cap of the hat goes i don't know why i i feel like starting with the character's cap it goes in there and it comes out on there i'm sticking with my silhouette just to see how accurate i've got it right um i'll i'll pull and adjust as i go so then we've got the the outline curve i'll adjust the shapes very slightly of the hat there like that now here is his eye line which is coming straight down like this. Now his eye is kind of half closed here. I don't know if it's half closed or open, but it's very, you know, and then you've got his eyebrow, which is in line with this part of the head coming up here like that, All right? So we have his kind of eye shape. Do we even see his eyeball? I don't really see in this rough drawing. I just don't know. Now the head is at an angle like this, right? So this is kind of nice because his other eye, as we come down off here, right? I like to take my time with the eyes. Comes off, first we have the nose line coming down here and his other eyebrow just slants down like that. We don't really see the eye. Now we're going to go straight into from his eye line. We're going to go straight into finding his cheek, right? Which is extremely graphic. They don't hold back with these graphic shapes, right? And his nose is almost like a the bill of a duck, right? Almost reminds me of that uh, goose in Balto, right? So we have this here like this. So all very aquatic um, qualities to this design. So in today's character study and breakdown, rather than showing you so much about how to copy it or get the shapes right exactly, I'm looking more in a more advanced level into more uh, professional design level stuff. Look at that. Look, his his bill could almost be that of a of a duck right if if i just did that right his nose so then in line with half of his eye over here we've got his mouth right which is great coming off it now the mouth is really really appealing it's all coming straight off here for his front lip he's a drunkard he's drinking so we're gonna open this lip up he's obviously in the middle of a line of dialogue i love original animation drawings animator drawings for me are what i love looking at i you know i'm not one of these people that is really so blown away by the digital painting it's nice and all that but i love this kind of blue pencil black line cleanup animation line art I absolutely love it All right so here he's got I don't quite think that could be his teeth. So you see his mouth is a little bit open there. Then we're going to come off. Come in just slightly where his chin. Big, big graphic shape. Now this is all... This is one of the problems I have with this thing. Because I feel they wanted to make it look more CG when it's 2D. So they have these very graphic elements to the design which allow for the colors to be uh to have that kind of shading so they basically frame the character's face 
inside his hairstyle in this very simplistic way which will allow for the you know it's almost like it could be designed for a cutout but it's animated so well that obviously it's not you know but that's just the design it's a personal thing okay my you know th th whatever whatever i say about it there's no denying that this is one heck of a strong drawing and strong character design it's just my personal um beef with the modern choices you know uh it's, otherwise it's certainly not a criticism this is outstanding outstanding stuff and if i'm honest i'm actually really enjoying uh drawing it and enjoying the simplicity of it just how good it is in spite of its simplicity right so this now gets divided in half right along here then we're going to divide that line down here and we're going to bring this straight so you see this becomes his face framed in hair all right just like that all right. now because i've tried to fit it in my silhouette i shouldn't do this right but he's again you see that's in a way that's that proves my beef about this kind of drawing i can elongate his whole head and it'll be accurate when this kind of thing of squashing and stretching like this is very symbol based uh design which is you know um again i don't want to don't want to criticize such a nice drawing but again that that's another problem i have with this style you could never uniform free transform a a conventional traditional disney style character without having to make adjustments it just wouldn't work because it's it's based on more anatomical drawing and stuff like that but i'm wanting to fit this guy in my silhouette so again i'm gonna bring his head down to size a bit because i want to fit him in my silhouette so i'm playing a lot with software here as i'm doing this drawing today um this is a little bit different but in a way i don't mind because perhaps it illustrates there's nothing wrong with it okay if you want to do this kind of uh style great right but it just illustrates why i perhaps um don't respect it as much as the original traditional disney style of drawing because as i said you can't just uniform around that stuff you have to redraw it if you get something out it's not gonna it's not gonna be so forgiving all right so maybe this illustrates why maybe people say to you me klaus is great why don't you why do you not seem to talk particularly highly of it well i am talking highly of it now as i'm studying it because no doubt about it amazing uh, character design amazing drawing but maybe you can see my side of things the way i've just free transformed and uh, shifted things around um it's not a hundred percent draftsmanship because of the simplicity of the shapes you know too graphic too graphic right so we go along here like this so that's the head that we have there um now i'm gonna come in and figure out where his coat goes to right so this is a straight line like this so this coat i'm gonna keep dragging all the way down to that straight line there like that we're gonna find that right. now his collar is gonna come along here and that's gonna be just off here like this and then from here now i need to be careful with my proportions right so this goes around this perhaps is not so long because this lines up with this right so now you're seeing how i can uh, how i'm lining things up to to get the accurate representation of what it is that i'm i'm trying to study from but you see here again is that negative triangle coming in here this lovely lovely drapery that we have coming through and around i'll just continue that 
I'll come back to that when we do the arm and hand. Now this classic traditional animation shape of the elbow coming like this. Of course, when you're dealing with such graphic shapes, moving and maintaining volume and depicting form. Now this is in line with this, right? Uh, is a lot easier. Okay. Which is another thing. Um, it's a lot harder. Like <clears throat> the character designer is, is fantastic. Um, but I would say that the animation, doing the animation on a project like this would be a lot easier because you're managing, the shapes are a lot simpler to manage. Um, there's, there's less subtle alterations and tapers um, to, to screw up on. Now, does that mean that there's not great animation in here? No. What that means is, is that in the hands of a master, these drawings are going to look outstanding, right? And in the hands of an average hack, right, they're going to be acceptable. But if, for example, you look at the drawings of, I don't know, Aladdin or the Little Mermaid in the movie, and then you look at the drawings of Aladdin or the Little Mermaid in the TV series, and you're not just a lay person, you're actually somebody who's interested in drawing and animation, you're going to see that those drawings that you see of those characters in, in the... Now, he's got his hand coming here. In those Disney TV series, based on those movie characters, they're, they're practically unacceptable. They're just awful. They're not acceptable. Because, but then again, there'll be plenty of people doing these characters where they won't be drawn as nice. But I'll confess, one of the reasons I was struggling to find an image of this character was because there was a lot of deviant art stuff online and I was finding it hard to distinguish which one was drawn by the movie people and which ones were fan arts by some of the deviant artists. Um, so what it means is like they're just, just more acceptable because of the simplicity of it. Now I know that when I'm going to take a drawing like this, it's going to be one of the best drawings in the world because it's done by, you can immediately tell, especially if you know animation, it's done by somebody who really really knows how to draw and animate. I'm having so much fun doing this drawing. I'm actually taking my time and just just geeking out over just how harmonious uh, and masterful the choices of shapes are in this drawing. So I'm making sure that I'm getting that across in case some of you listening to me or getting the, the, the mixed message or confused idea, Do am I rubbishing this film or am I rating the artwork in this film? I'm kind of explaining to you not so much about the film, but about ha the skill sets required. It doesn't matter what you're working on. Um, I saw somebody, uh, somebody joined my training library who is very experienced in storyboard and character design. Um, I, I, I remember the name and it said, this person has joined your training library. I'm not going to disclose that name because it's not my business to do so. Uh, so I Googled it and I thought, wow, this, and I, they've got an Instagram account and everything. And I looked at their work and I thought, wow, 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 this person is, is can really draw and can really, really, you know, the storyboarding skill and everything is. And I just thought to myself, I, I, I felt great happiness, but also great um, 
frustration that somebody with those skills is, uh, in my opinion, unable to fulfill uh, the potential on industry stuff because the stuff that they're being asked to work on is just so below their skill set, in my opinion. And the same thing I used to feel about myself when I was working on Lego, uh, Lego TV shows and things like that. I was getting, I was actually losing my drawing skills because day in, day out, I was for, for a year, I was drawing Lego characters and not much time to draw much else because the schedule was insane. Um, so I, th that's why I kind of like, I had enough. Um, but there are so many artists in the animation industry who are so good, who are really, really just a grade top of the top of the line drafts people. And nobody would really know it because of the, the finished product of, you know, unfortunately what these studios are demanding from from the people working on them. You just wouldn't know. Um, so uh, the thing is, when I look at a drawing like this, and obviously this this movie has been designed by one of the, now I've got my hand, I'm sticking with my silhouette here and I'm out. I am way out here. So I'm going to have to I make an adjustment here as I'm just rambling and talking. Uh, what I'm going to do is, yeah, the beer jug is slightly smaller. Right. I'm going to make that beer jug slightly smaller. Um, like that. Yeah, so Sergio Pablos, I mean, he did Dr. Doppler in Treasure Planet, which is a structural masterpiece. I mean, the, the, the drawing of that character is out of this world. I, I don't particularly like the character, the way he's written in the movie, because I just think he takes the sincerity out of it. And one of the worst lines in that movie is the go Dilbert, go Dilbert, but... Never mind. I mean, from a drawing perspective, from an acting animation perspective, it's just amazing, right? He also did the elephant, the baby elephant, and I think the adult one, I'm not sure, in uh, Tarzan. This guy is at the top of the top of the top of the line, you know, and maybe his own personal style. Personally, not my thing. Like, I really don't like the Despicable Me thing. That's all his personal look but then again that's got nothing to do with his ability that's that's down to taste my personal taste his personal expression you know who cares what I think from his point of view you know he's killing it and he deserves to um, but he uh, he's designed all this and this is absolutely so potentially in the right hands you're going to get some outstanding drawing in this movie and some very average drawing in, in the in, in the, you know, from the people who don't perhaps have those abilities. Right. So here um, I've made a study of this character. I'm going to leave it like that. I think um, I think I've taken enough time on this uh, 38 minutes into the stream so it didn't take as long as I thought but you can see we've got I'm gonna just storyboard flip selected scene yeah that works in inverse but you can really see that that's one heck of a nice I'm gonna just bring it to size within the frame that's a, one heck of a nice character isn't it you know very very nice um, so and then it all has the look of this boat about it right so let's just put that there right. so we can see that this 
essentially is just this. So hopefully you've been able to have a look at that and see um, the fun aspect of this uh, character design, just how much like a boat he actually is and the shape choices. And hopefully it's made you really think about silhouette and harmony, uh, appeal, exaggeration. So this, this is what, you know, if you look at early Don Bluth, Again, going back to what I was saying, and I'm really not, I've given this enough praise, so hopefully you know that I'm talking, if, you, if, if you're just a Klaus fanboy and you're getting offended, then I'm sorry, but like, hopefully you know I really respect this and I really respect the drawing, but, and I'm not just trying to rubbish or belittle or take anything away, but what I am going to say is if you look at early Don Bluth, he, like Secret of Nim, there was a lot of uh, additional stuff being put in the characters uh, to give them their kind of quality, right? Then you look at late Don Bluth, when he had lesser animators, all his best animators had left. You had the last few movies like Troll in Central Park, Pebble and the Penguin. You started seeing him using these very harsh, simple shapes you know and he himself didn't really enjoy the dragon's lair project um i know it's like something he wanted to expand into a movie but if you listen to some some articles i love dragon's lair he looked at sir k but he wanted something that could be done quickly because it had a very low budget at the time so everything was made to be moved in a simple way right in a simple way with simple shapes right like this so i'm picking on something that i love right dragon's lair is a very inspirational um thing for me a very, very huge influence on me but in the right hands aka john pomroy's hands right another one of the best in the world right this guy was doing amazing things and had amazing drawings despite when you look on the model sheet it's very very simple you know literally they talk about the character being constructed like this right so again an entry-level person could draw a convincing Dirk the Daring, right? And an entry-level person could do this guy justice because they're all basic shapes. But oh, a master would get a drawing like this out, right? Really, really amazing. The expression the counterbalance of the shapes, the weight, the force, everything in this drawing is just, for want of a better word, just amazing, outstanding, right? So it's the same thing uh, with that. But whereas if you take a, if you take a bell or a, a character which is more like, you know, got more delicate, based on you know something which is more based on less less based it's very much shape material but it's very intuitive as well it's very very kind of like got to be got to rely on the draftsmanship the understanding of anatomy uh, facial proportion stuff like that less so you can't be with the graphic shapes so there's less room for error so therefore the entry level guy is going to suffer more uh and struggle more to get something out of that he's not going to be able to rely on these very very graphic shapes to hide his lack of ability uh so hopefully that uh, explains as to why i think the traditional style of animation the milk call particularly the Milk Carl era, um, 
you know the those characters were which were very very graphic but at the same time had the balance of that illustrative quality which gave them pure draftsmanship and less about these simple graphic shapes hopefully that kind of gives you some insight into that okay now before we go and look at people's work um I'm going to come, come and read some of your comments in the chat. If you have any <coughs> any questions for me, I can answer them for you. Um, if they're related to any personal animation issues or drawing issues that you're struggling with, ask away uh, while I read through these comments. And then in the second half of the stream, we're going to go to the global Real Animator Facebook community and look at some of the work that you've been posting in there. Um, so somebody's asking am i familiar of course i'm familiar with the road to el dorado uh i know it very very well i would i would personally just call it chel dorado uh because chel is uh let's just say brings out the man in anyone does that make me petty or childish or juvenile heck okay i don't mind but woo what a character <laughs> right okay um Camera. Okay, so we've gone back here uh, to the beginning of the chat. Um, nothing really said. Uh, no questions there. Um, Cameron just telling people where he is. Did you hear about the ranking of kings? It has pretty amazing animation and art style. No, I haven't heard about it. Let's have a quick look now. Ranking of Kings. Um, I I would disagree with you personally. I think it's got uh, personally. I think the art style is, from my perspective, very poor. I'm sorry to say that, but hey, I respect you enough to not just patronize you or whatever. I'm just sharing my opinion. And looking at the poses of the character, I would say that it hasn't got amazing animation either. Um, I would say it, it looks almost uh, anime influenced. Let me just very quickly go to YouTube and see if I can spot a clip of it. Now I've got to put my sound down. I won't be able to show you that, but then I'll tell you what I think of the animation. My honest opinion, right? Uh, Ranking of Kings official trailer. Okay. Typical anime timing. Um... It's got an old school feel to it. The walk cycle works. I wouldn't call it amazing. Um, the mount, oh, the run, the run cycle on the battlements of the castle is very poor. Um, it feels like uh, Japanese TV. There used to be this show that used to come back when I was growing up in the 90s uh, that had this th theme song called Pinocchio. P I N O double C H I O. Hey, Pinocchio. And the Geppetto used to talk like this. Pinocchio, my son, my dear son. Oh, my God, Pinocchio. I love you so much, Pinocchio. Oh, God, please don't let anything happen to you, Pinocchio. Pinocchio, my son. Father, please. Ah, ah, father. That's how Pinocchio. It reminds me of that. Um, very TV, uh, low-grade work. I'm, I'm sorry, Oreo, if that upsets you. Um, is it Oreo who asked me that question? Who asked me about the ranking of kings? Yes, I'm sorry, that's just my opinion. And I respect you enough to give you my honest opinion. And, you know, we can just disagree about it. But it, it's, it's, it looks very, very poor uh, to me. Um, but it's, a, you know, it's a, got an old school vibe to it. So well done to whoever is doing it for that. You do better with your iPhone. Fantastic. Why don't you go and uh, do better with your iPhone and leave us leave us poor mortals uh, to to delude ourselves with my live stream? Uh, I wish you the best. Um, okay, Villa. Or okay, so there we are. That is it. We are done with the questions. Uh, so right now, let us now go to the global Facebook community and have a look at the work that's been posted in there. Um, ba -ba -bum. Back on to here. Uh, 
Right, let's bring this in. Um, new activity. Right, I, I now work from the wall up to down. We have got the lovely Elena Eccentrics with her amazing profile picture. I, I'm, I love this profile character of hers so much that I almost want to animate it myself. I really like that. I wish I could blow that profile up, but I don't want to click on it because I don't want to bring her profile onto the screen. Um, hello there. This is the extreme frames of the primary and secondary action lecture. AMB, can you check volume, please? Thank you, uh, Elena. She's working her way through the Real Animator Training Intermediate Animation Archive. I will check the volume, Elena, but more importantly, I'll check the arcs and the other things as well. Um, volume is important, but uh, less so when you're learning for these things. All right, let's have a look. All right. Now, if you're doing it as the pose test, I'm going to I'm going to just l examine each pose by going frame by frame. Maybe hold on each pose for long enough, maybe about eight frames or four, four six frames. So it gives me time to see the uh, see what's going on. Um, all right. First thing, what I notice is you see here with this pose here, it's the volume might be fine, but what happens when you're thinking about volume, Elena, is we're kind of losing the attitude in the character, right? Um, now, I don't know because I don't have my own lecture and I made it a few years ago, so, but I'm pretty sure that I would have checked this drawing. I wouldn't have done it this way. But I'm going to explain to you some important things that are more important way more important than volume right so it's funny you were copying my frames and i've forgotten my frames so i'm copying your copies of my frames right so there we go it's so long ago since i made this lecture right but let's have a look at one of the things okay so in this particular pose he's thrown the ball in the air right and i won't have him throwing it so high because i just want to illustrate what you've done right so the he's thrown the ball in the air right now so in the next pose right he's then caught the ball right now what you've done you've got the volume kind of right and you are paying attention to get the creases and folds in the sack right but you've got his kind of you've got his kind of back hunching up here like this i'm exaggerating this but I want you to see, can you see this happening in your, in your, um, in your work, right? Can you see this happening? Okay. Now that causes a dis, like it takes away some of that. When I was doing the Klaus character, that appeal, okay, that, that, that shape appeal, that nice thing. So we're getting this strange kind of feeling as we get now you are listening because i can see that you're you're looking at the harmony of shape the important thing about these lectures elena is not so much things like the volume i know that's what a lot of people who have been doing teaching themselves animation for a long time think oh if i could just get my volume down because they they're kind of happy with the way they draw and they want to they want to move their characters and but but they don't understand that it's as I was saying at the beginning, talking about the difference between the top tier and the low tier with these kind of characters and these, they don't understand now these little things that really, really make this good. Now I'm going to copy the way you did it so you can see the effects, right? Now, the whole point of this, these flower sack, sack lectures is to teach you about shape harmony as well as animation. To give you that and you are following i can see that so you are where you are so you haven't done anything wrong it's important that you understand that you just are where you are right but it's you know i like being able to interact with you so i can help you so now i need to think you need to think about more like the spine right you you got the lumbar spine which goes like this 
right? And then you've got the sacrum, which comes back, and then your pelvis is all that. Then you've got the thoracic spine, right? Which goes like this, right? That's your main spine. Then you've got the cervical spine, which goes like this, right? So you want to think more about the, the, let's just get rid of that more about this guy having that kind of effect right so you got to think almost as if now i didn't teach it this way in the in the in the lectures but you got to almost think like and then the squash and stretch of this ring like thing will then have more we need to bring more of a back now you're following my exact video perhaps i didn't exaggerate it as much as what i'm doing here right but it, it will be in there right and the the position it's it's the harmony between the poses like this will fatten out a bit right it's the harmony between the poses that make all the difference right you got the arms right they all go in nicely as one big kind of little shape like that so getting the getting the volumes right the volume is such an easy thing right and what people don't understand is, is once you acquire all these abilities, you will just naturally start to get volume right because you volume comes from rep repetition, just like building muscles and repeatedly getting doing the same thing again. Your hand eye judgment gets better, right? It's easy. It's not it's entry level stuff. That's why cleanup artists are cleanup artists and not animators right because this stuff the cleanup artist would not necessarily know right the the nice appealing squash and stretch the harmony between the shapes right they wouldn't get that right they would just be too busy focusing on volume and model so these are the things which i'm going to drum into you a little bit more elena uh, rather than just having you just say, yeah, the volumes are good, and now we can just tidy it up and 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 uh, and complete the exercise, right? We don't want that. We want you to take the goodness of what's in it. See here, he I like this one because he's squashing, he's stretching a little bit, he's getting thinner, which is good. But again, the way his back is relating in this frame to these two frames is a little out, right? So he's coming here. He's coming back down here, which is good. Again here, he's leaning back, which is good. Now, even the way I see you drawing the midline, right? It's nice, but I see you, again, with the exaggeration, we want to really, really feel the exaggeration of that. I kind of feel like it's almost like split in two, right? That's the whole fun of this flower sack. You see, it's kind of straight there like that you're 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 following the pose as well so don't worry but i'm just telling you the things that i think are more important than volume these look almost exact i like these nice the throw hair see hair he's supposed to squash but he is getting he's gaining mass he's getting fatter and hair he's 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 thinner because he's stretching but he feels like he's gaining a little too much mass in here. He should be getting fatter, but it feels like he's not. He's he's grown too much in overall mass on this one, uh, and that's where which leads to this extra big one here, right? So he's too big here in these two frames. He's a little too big volume wise. Hair seems fine. Hair seems fine. Maybe um, maybe a little bit too big and fat. You may want to bring this drawing, and this is called uh, Place and Trace. So say if I had a character here, right, and then he was going to be here, I may take this drawing on a new frame, and or you could paste it there and draw your new pose over it to make sure that your sizing is correct, right? So you don't have to just judge with your uh with your eye so that's one way that you could do it um overall uh i think the comment i believe it was mage burger who said it um he gets a little bit bigger right at the end yes volume wise 
that's so he gets a little too fat a little bit bigger than at the beginning um but otherwise it's good um it's it looks pretty good to me from the that's the chat looks pretty good to me from the volume um aspects um oh we don't smooth it yet uh oreo uh she's working out the main poses the smoothness smoothness again is not important smoothness is easy you just add more frames it's knowing where to add them knowing where to arc and where to time so she's following an exercise at the moment uh and she's doing the right thing she's posting it in its earliest phase before she invests more time in it um as i said i can't promise i can't give promise feedback but i i try to do these streams as often as i can and offer feedback to the people who value my feedback uh, out of the goodness of my own heart right so kevin silver i have to say i'm 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 feeling very envious of kevin silver's surname these days as i'm enjoying uh cobra kai and remembering a character from my childhood which i used to be obsessed with which was uh terry silver and uh kevin silver has got the same surname making him even more badass uh he is now in the advanced archive and he has started his 360 head rotation exercise so he says my 360 head rotation i changed the eyes and tried to keep things solid um when you say you change the eyes um i'm not sure what you mean if you did this test before don't try to change anything from the exercise and redesign it because it defeats the purpose you know you you got to be able to understand it before trying to add your own flair into into it let's have a look at that and what you've got okay not bad uh but again here you you don't change the eye shape um maybe you changed it because it, you wanted something easier maybe in the lecture i said it might be easier to do the eye a different way if i said that in the lecture then stick with it but i i advise you not to go changing things uh because you're gonna you're gonna struggle you're gonna you're going to miss the point as you're trying to put your own interpretation into something without acquiring the know-how first there's a lot of issues going on here if you look at the ratio of the face um so you look the zygomatic bone gets bigger here this is probably a little too in between uh kevin um i would suggest uh as going with the lecture i would suggest you get the profile down now the profile is you've got this it should be in line with this and you get the three quarters uh intact you got a little bit of imbalance on the face right so um you've got the the face is here and you've got the now i'm exaggerating right you've got the mouth hair and the the middle of the face right here it's not that imbalanced what you've done right this going but it's there right um also the the important thing to remember is is also then you see the imbalances here with the zygomatic portion right this portion this part should not be equal to this part right as explained in the lecture i'm going to explain it very quickly to you in a very simple way right right because we use that diamond here right so we have this diamond right now in this diamond i'm just going to put two round eyes we get, we create this kind of t junction right right in here and then the jaw comes off and the the t junction can continue right but we're not going to talk too much about the bottom i just want you to focus on this area right 
So if we then have a profile of this, right? So we now move it into profile. We then half everything, right? So these this kind of junction continues. Now I'm not going to put the nose in because I want you to understand this this T junction aspect, right? So they're like that, right? So if we're going to create one between it, Kevin, and this is in the lecture better than what I'm explaining now, right? So, but what's happened, I'll tell you what's happened anyway. And I read a comment in when I was doing the window, work window stream. I, I don't comment on those, but I read you getting frustrated. And I'll tell you another thing, which is, you know, one of the things that you just, why you just have to just be patient, right? So is this middle line here, right? So that this D junction is going to come here in the middle, right? Now, here on this side, this side of the face cannot be equal to this side, right? In this, in this three-quarter aspect, right? So you, you see the, this is where this is going to get smaller, right? This is, it looks equal, but it's not. It's just the balance, the way the shape is being balanced, right? So here, if you want to, you can put these now on the front view. They will be equal, right? It will be equal. But in the side view, in the three-quarter view, this one is going to be more prominent and this one's going to have less prominence, right? It's not going to look equal because it's going away in the distance like that. So... You've, you've got to focus on these facial balances in, in the main poses that you're making, right? So again, here, you see the, this side of the eye is far too long, right? I don't know, can you see my mouse cursor? Yes, you can. This side of the eye is far too long, and this one is far too small. It should be the other way around, because this is the side closest to us, right? Yet this part of the face feels too big. So these, these imbalances are occurring. Again, as we're moving closer to the front, this is the thinner side and this is the fatter side. Can't be so. Because, because this is we're introducing this half. That's the cheat. When we, when we do these head turns, I'm going to do a quick head turn for you, right? Right, let's just all you can see is half of the character's face, right? All you can see is half of the character's face, right? I don't know, just made him up, right? That's all you can see. Now, as he as he turns this way, now we're gonna see now we're gonna see his entire face, right? Right, so here we can see the, the entire face of, like, we see two eyes, we see the nose, we see the mouth, we see the face, right? So the problem occurring between here and here, right, is we need to introduce the other half of the face. So by introducing it, it's got to be less... It's got to be less prominent, right? So I'm gonna put the head down. I'm gonna make this side smaller, right? We're gonna cut in. We're gonna have, if this is half of his face, we're just bringing in a little bit of that eye, right? We're gonna have his head down here, a little bit of the mouth section there like that right we're introducing the half of that guy's face right that's what it is so if we look from the nose right this is the nose right so we are introducing this it can't be bigger and this can't be smaller right so we're introducing the half now 
as we introduce it to this much, right? This is a good bit P Picasso cubism, actually. Walt Disney had his animators study cubism, right? People don't understand all these artsy-fartsy critics of Disney calling it commercial back in the day. Maybe Disney now has become something even I despise, and my God, they had to do something to make me despise them, right? Because I used to be the biggest fanboy on the planet, right? So, but back in the original day, he, they really, really wanted this stuff to work. So you see, now we've introduced this side, which is just kind of like a side of someone's profile, right? If you think about it, it's like a profile. We are now taking away this side, right? So you need to understand um, this theory when you're doing these the, when you're doing a cat when you this is one of the things that I think as a as a beginner who's upping their drawing game while your animation you've you've got you've understood the theory of animation and you've taken to that the drawing is a difficulty for you because of these little things that you are missing intuitively right so you're getting one side of the face see again here now you're like putting this massive forehead and disappearing the eye into the face hair. Um, it can't be so. Again, as you're making these drawings, Kevin, I would like you to study the video that you're, you're following along with and really look and ask yourself, does that look like what I'm seeing in the video? There's no shame in constantly referring to the video right doesn't matter if you're in the advanced archive now you've earned your place to be in the advanced archive all right this archive is all about getting your drawing and your animation in harmony with each other so what should be happening right now is happening all right don't allow this uh to send you in a downward negative spin all right um i would say Get those main poses right before trying to in between it, Kevin, and post it, okay? Give me the front, the profile, the three-quarter, okay? Not three-quarter front. Don't do that. We teach you about three-quarter front, the true three-quarter, right? Uh, the three-quarter rear, and the rear right so just one two three four five poses give me those five poses right um now before i go and look at the next person's post um i'm gonna have a little conversation with kevin um because octavio has commented something, something as well, well. But I, I remember Kevin writing something about his life drawing in a stream where I wasn't lecturing or I wasn't hang, I wasn't talking to you guys. I was just working and I was just streaming my work with music. And I read Kevin's comment and Kevin said something like he's trying to do life drawing and he's 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 frustrated about where he is and does anybody have any advice or any 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 route he can go down look the thing is you've really hang on hang on um, excuse me I've just got to take this phone call it's my beautiful daughter sweetheart um, I'm streaming at the moment what, what what is what's going on are you at the door oh okay I just I just looked out you weren't there okay okay i'll come and get you okay sorry about that very unprofessional i've got to let my daughter in okay i'll be back in uh less than a minute Right. 
Apologies. Right, so, Kevin. Kevin was saying uh, that basically um, he's frustrated and he's asking for advice. The thing is, you have to, and I know this is what makes this is what makes getting good at anything feel really hard especially when you want it so bad and when you're perhaps starting from scratch right so certain things are very new to you like drawing right you don't have much drawing experience some people might come to animation with a wealth of drawing experience that they can carry over into it what's so hard is staying on the track and accepting where you are and just allowing yourself to continue it's like imagine i like doing this because kevin likes to lift weights right Imagine if you know that you have to do, all you're going to do is this, right? There's only a certain way you can do it. You could do a hammer curl. You can do a reverse. You can do a supination. Or you can do a straight up one like that, right? Some people might say, bring it up fast and let it down really, 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 really slowly. Some people might say, bring it up really, 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 really slowly and let it down really really doesn't matter oh it's the same move right it's the same move and there's only a few different ways that you can attack it you might add weight you might do but it's the same move now i want you to imagine you are the scroniest person in the world you have come to a gym with all these really buff people that you wished you had their level of ability or their muscles and they'll tell you do this eat this do this whatever doesn't matter what they say it does matter because they're giving you good advice but ultimately Time, the right amount of time has to pass. So imagine your hair, right? I'm going to say two years later. You think it took two years for some of those guys to get that the, the, the shape that they are? No. If they've got their arms down, they've got their abs to sort out, They've got their tra traps to sort out. They've got their deltoids. They've got their triceps. They've got so many different things to sort out, you know. But they've also still got to keep these guys going, right? So do you think after two years, say you're, you're a lot better, but you can't allow yourself to see the improvement because you're too busy bitching about why you still got scrawny arms compared to those guys or where you expected that you should have bigger bigger arms or bigger bigger it's the same thing and then you start panicking and you start going to other people and saying hey hey i'm not happy what else can i do with my arm and they will say go and do some chin up Go and do, chin-ups are good for arms. They work the biceps. Go and do some uh, flies. Go and do some, I don't know. Personally, I don't spend enough time on biceps, as you can tell, to care about, to, to give you that many variations. But they will tell you all these different variations. Now, maybe some of their suggestions might be right. But the thing is, you're getting off one, you're jumping off one route and you're going down another route. And guess what? When you start the other route, you're starting from scratch again. And you're starting a whole new set of things again that you suck at. Because I tell you what, you can get guys that can lift 
25 kgs with a dumbbell, but then get them to hang from a chin-up bar and even do about three of them, I would dare say even sometimes one, they're in for a rude awakening depending on their weight, right? So they're going to be like, I suck. And they're going to spend all this time doing that in goal for this. But they're not going to get that because they're starting from scratch. So you're prolonging the agony, making yourself feel more worthless, more insecure, more pathetic by jumping ship, going on another ship, uh, and not giving yourself a chance and just accepting the fact that you are going to be where you want to be. You just have to allow it to happen. Now I'm going to draw in a very good diagram for you in a second that'll really, I think, not just Kevin, but anybody else in this chat that is struggling with this kind of thing right now, it really, this way of thinking really helped me. And I think it's going to help you too. I'll just quickly read what Octavio is saying. Hey, Ed Tato, how are you doing? I remember having a hard time mirroring the keys of the advanced head turnaround and it always looked unbalance i got better results just drawing it maybe kevin is having the same problem yeah yeah well yeah so don't mirror it and i say in that exercise you shouldn't mirror it you should mirror it in the following one of the the turnaround right um he should just draw it but the thing is is he's got to do it more than once the first time it's always gonna gonna expose things or because of your familiarization Familiarization is simply familiarizing yourself with the unfamiliar. Therefore, the unfamiliar is going to be strange. It's going to be awkward. It's going to be acquainted. You don't have one conversation with one person and know everything there is to know about them, right? That takes years in some regards. You know, there are people who've dated for years and when they marry, they realize, oh, look at the hair in the sink. Look at all this. Look at that. Look at whatever. You know, even then they're not familiar with the other person. So the repeat, repeated act of, you know, doing something over and over again creates familiarization and know-how and understanding and expertise. Now we're going to go back and look at people's work, but I'm going to do this one diagram for Kevin and for anybody else who is the kind of person who gets too much in their own way, inhibiting their real growth, their real development, and their real progress. This is going to, maybe, it's, it, it was a complete life changer for me. Maybe this illustration, right? I got it as a mental conception, but maybe this illustration will just put things in perspective for you. All right. So I want you to imagine... Right, we we as as animators at the very start of animation, we teach timing, arcing, and slowing in and slowing out with our friend here called the pendulum. Right. Well, this pendulum is a lesson for life, not just animation. Right. Because here, you've got success, and here you've got failure. Right. And here is what they're hanging on one point not two they're both the either ends of the same either two poles of the same thing right you can imagine it as a stick one stick but with two sides success and failure right so this just represents the two of the one side. Now, this thing is in constant motion, right? That's called your life, right? And guess what? The measure of the swing to the left is also the measure of the swing to the right. The measure of the swing to the right is also the measure of the swing to the left. So let me just put it to you like this, Kevin. Let's say that you are 
You are hair. You feel like you're right here. You feel like you're so close to failure. You're so far from success, right? That's because you're looking at the failure. But look, look and feel enthusiastic at just how much growth is in store for you. Because by law, by law of rhythm, this pendulum has, this can't stop here, okay? It'll stop here. And when it stops moving, you're dead, right? It's dead. So if as long as it keeps moving, you're going, you got, you're going to experience so much joy and happiness. Yes, yes. Hair, if you're only, you know, you're going to experience only a little bit of failure. So take your eye off that and look at all of this success. The amount of it, the measure of success that you're having right now, right? So, okay, then you say, well, all right, that's a nice, that's a nice way of looking at it. But what about if I'm this close to success, right? If I'm this close to success, that means I've got all this possibility to fail, right? Well, again, what side are you looking at, right? Just say, how much more success am I going to squeeze out of this thing, right? How much more success am I going to squeeze? So you keep being magnetized. You, as a living, breathing, thinking person, have the ability, by law of attraction, to magnetize your thoughts to the pole that you want to be magnetized to. You cannot escape the swing. It's got to keep in motion, right? There'll be times when you'll feel like you're winning and times when you feel like you're losing. But the real thing is what we call through a process of neutralization, neutralization, right, is you are able to what? We wanted to get rid of the blue. You are able to neutralize the, the negative effects mentally by understanding the law of the swing, the measure of the swing uh, to the left being the measure of the swing to the right. So as long as you understand that when you're working on your goals, it helps you really stay on track. So, and not want to have you act out of despair and uh, reactionary. You never want to react, you want to respond. So one of the best ways of responding is understanding what uh what what it all is um uh if you look at an atom you got the nucleus and you got the same amount of protons as you have electrons protons being the positive electrons being the negative this is the law of everything in nature you know and you can charge you can physically charge your mentality by focusing on the equal portion of that which is good for you, um, which is really going to help you. I hope that helps put things in perspective for you, Kevin. To stop making you panic and react. I know you want to get there faster. We all want to get there faster, right? Well, the fastest way is to neutralize the thought the the failure thought you remember when you're having so much fun time goes by quickly right the more you're focusing on that other end of the pole which is less desirable to you it's gonna feel like it's taking longer right isaac says hey i'm the stieglitz dude or stieglitz dude that sometimes pops onto streams we don't see him on this stream today um, I'm not in the library, hence this is not a library exercise, I can tell. In fact, I rarely get time to animate, but I wanted to get some feedback on the practice I did. Here I tried to animate a ball jumping from wall to wall, and I wanted to focus on breaking down each individual action into manageable steps. Um, all right, well, the first thing I would like you to do, Isaac, is to go up here to the featured section, right? 
you're not a library member, but that doesn't mean you can't be award, uh, rewarded and given free gifts for associating with me, right? You can go to the bottom here where it says access code and link to preliminaries. You copy this access code and you click on this link and you get nine free library lectures, right? Now, I want you to focus on this here, Master the Basic Bouncing Ball, and this one, the Basic Pendulum Swing, right? Now, this isn't a jumping ball, but I can tell from this post that you've put here, right? Now, I know that you've been following me, so maybe you th might think you know, but as I said about lifting weights, it's obvious you, you perhaps don't know enough. I can tell that you don't know in enough about timing or squash and stretch to, to have the feel of this ball jumping, because at the moment, Isaac, it doesn't feel like a ball. Even if the ball's got life and we want to put stretch into him, it feels like a piece of jelly that's, you know, almost not jumping, almost being pulled or slid along with my finger. I wish you could see me do holding my finger. It feels like I'm wiping and smearing the ball along with my finger as it's doing that. So it doesn't feel like there's any real timing. So I would like you to understand, um, go and watch that video and really understand what a half is really understand what a third is, really understand what a favor is, right? And then understand just what timing is, what slowing in and slowing out is, because at the moment you've put too much, you've put too much emphasis on the spacing is, is just too many frames making it feel like it lacks any weight or any slowing in or slowing out. And then you've your understanding of stretch is not in relation to that. So even if you want to have it not like a ball and like a piece of jelly, if he's splatting against the wall, and then I'll just do one side very quickly for you. So say we've got the ball here, right? Let's just add another frame here. Right? Let's say we've got the ball here, right? And then say in the next frame the ball is is here right you see how I'm sorting the arc out right I'm gonna put the ball here right and I'm gonna splat the ball at a at a media at a, at a kind of like medium kind of level right now I'm going to think about the arc. See, arcing, timing, slowing in and slowing out is where all of this comes in, right? So say you want to just do a traditional kind of like feel like that. So again, we're going to mirror that arc like that. We're going to have him go dump, dump like that, right? Right. So now, again, this really, if I think about it, should be more of like this the squash one, right so now we've got like our squash ball right so in the middle right say i want to work on thirds because 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 i'm working on thirds right two thirds of the way in between because there's squash and stretch being involved right so here I'm going to work on thirds again as well, right? So I'm going to put this here. Now notice how the ball isn't squashed or stretched on that third, right? This one, I'll, it's a little more like a favor. This one, I'll put it more to a third level there, right? So let's look at what we've got at the moment. Right. So, a little bit crude, but we need to build on it, right? So now we're going to put the next third in, right? So, 
between here and here. Now this third and this third is going to be a half. Now here's where I'm going to think about my stretch. Right? I'll put my stretch here like this. Right? I'll think a little bit about my stretch. Right? Like that. He's going to go here like this. Now again, between here and here, I want to put a third. Right? I'm going to think a little bit about my stretch here. Right? Bum, bum, bum. Right, like that. Let's see what we have now. Right? Bum, bum, bum. Again, just going through the motions, can't really see anything. So we now have to employ slowing in and slowing out through the utilizing the effect of the spacing, right? But this is the main thing, right? So we're now going to want to slow out of this guy. So as I slow out of this, I'm going to come out on a half into this kind of stretched, more stretched position here. Right. There, right? I'm going to come out of this. Now I'm going to want to slow into this, right? So I'm going to come in here. Right. And now I'm not going to put it halfway. I'm going to do what's called a favor. I'm going to have it hit the wall here like this, right? Like that, right? Now we're going to slow out of it, right? There's still more work to be done here, but I just want to show you. Right? So we're going to slow out of it like that, right? And we're going to slow into it. And we're going to slow into it with a favor where we come in like this. So let's see what effect that has. Right. Okay, we're now kind of getting something, but it's not, it's still not enough. It still just feels like it's going one side to the other side. So we need to bring it all together. So we need to really slow in. So here, on the first one, I'm not going to do much because I want to get the impact here, right? So I need to really, really think about the power of slowing in and slowing out. Right? That's where we get the effects in here. So we're going to half this once more. Right? Let's just do it. We're going to half this once more. And we're going to half it again. We're going to really, really use those frames. To give that feel. Right? And I'm going to come to the other side and do the same thing here. Do slow ins. Now, depending on your frame rate, this is why I say never, ever use 12 FPS. If you want to work on twos, expose each drawing twice. Because depending on your frame rate, right, you may uh, want to do this on ones, right? That's a bad stretch pose, right? You may want to do this on squash pose. You may want to do this on ones. And it'll be a lot faster, right? Or you're going to do it on twos and it'll be a lot slower. It's your choice, right? Depending on the, the effects that you have. Um, so we're not slowing out of the, the thing. We're just slowing into the slam, right? So here you see... Now there's more of a dart feel, right? Going from here to here. Now I wonder, right? You see, you, you can look at it 
and it feels like he's splat splat like that that's one way that you can do this thing right to get that stick stick effect from one side to the other but the that's just the entry level now if again if i'm not i'm not doing this as real animator training i didn't do a lecture like this but let me show you how we could make it a lot more interesting right is by varying up the arcs now i'm going to change what i've done here and so we don't keep looking i don't have to keep drawing these guys right um so i'm going to start this time with the ball hair like this right now i'm going to duplicate this right now here's what makes this here's the the real power of animation which is you can't I can't talk enough about this, right? I just drew it, right? It's an arc, right? So we're gonna splat the ball there. Now, who's to say that that has to be the next arc in that very boring way, right? That I I did the first one, right? So the first arc is like this. The next arc I might want to make like this and I might want to push his squash and stretch more right like this then the next one I'm gonna make like this right I push it even more like that and let's see I shouldn't have done that I gotta duplicate this frame and get rid of this guy first that was that was where i went wrong right so the next one we're gonna keep this similar like that and then finally we're gonna have some fun right with less of a one hair like this right but the arc is gonna be like boom like that right so Let's do the whole thing very, very uh, similar to the last. So this one, I'm going to do again on thirds timing, right? So let's do it on thirds timing. Let's have it follow the arc, right? So the first third would be here, right? Let me just do this straight ahead. Not straight ahead, but just without doing all of it right let me first get this arc sorted right so the second less of a stretch here right it's all about the quality of the squash and stretch too right so it's like there 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 right now i'll just very quickly put my slow in key right so let's take that let's put that solid there like that right so that's this now we're going to do this one right so this is going to be on another third but very different actually no um see this is where you start moving from this and so this, this arc is going to be a long stretch on a third here like this right like I'm here like that right and this arc I'm gonna make this one a lot flatter right so then out of this let me break this down first All right so then out of this one we're gonna have him still here like this right bum 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 like this all right now i'll have my i'm gonna change up this i'm gonna have a further squash key like this right and then from here I'm going to go into a favor key. Probably going to be more like this. Right? 
bum bum right. again the same deal we're gonna bring that in like that there now on this one um, we're gonna sort the arc out um, we're gonna change things up a bit I'm gonna have the ball here like this right. so then from here to here We're going to play with this. We're going to play with the favor. Like that. Yeah. Right. I'm going to keep it there. And then we're going to add in another one. Because this one will need just a bit more to identify the arc. We're going to add a third up here. Like this. Now we're going to sh shift from a third onto a half. Right. The first half that I'm using, I'm right. going to put that half here like this. Right. These are just my um, ideas about the keys and breakdowns, by the way. So no in-betweens to make it feel good yet. Right. You see, this is the gr this is why we this is why we l t learn bouncing ball because this is the easiest way to practice our kink timing, slowing in and slowing out. So at the moment we have this, right? We need to build on it with our in-betweens now. We get an idea, okay? These two are faster, and this is slowing down. But we need to build on it with the timing now, right? So let's go. For, let's see what we go between here and here. Right. So between here and here, we're gonna have just one halfway, like this, right? Not the best of shapes right it does actually matter right so this is here that's fine no in between there no in between there but i'm gonna have one between here and here right so this is gonna set him off so one between here right bum, bum, bum. right and because of the power and force i'm gonna put another one all right and another one because he's gonna get super fast in a minute all right so we're gonna linger around this pose gotta be a little bit bigger right now we're gonna come out of it straight into this here right so I'm going to see how that works before I move on. Yep, so we slow in there. Now you see just at the beginning, I could, I'm could. i going to leave the, the middle to alone for now, just to show you how slowing down the end will bring this all together, right? Just how, so I'm going to do this, right? But now here I'm going to do the traditional bouncing ball art. here right so between here and here I'm gonna put this here right? Right. and then here and here now why did that happen I don't want that I put it should be between here and here sorry um, between here and here we're gonna put one here but we're gonna really really slow this down and play right so between here and here oh, I always slow in more than I slow out there are times when you won't 
it, you, you'll have to do the other, but when you're going up into something, it's always slowing in more than you slow out. There you go. So you see how we've played with the speed of that, right? And you could go even more here, right? So I could really slow this one down, which is what I'm going to. It's, it, I think I've illustrated my point, but I'm, I'm enjoying myself, right? So I can go from here to here and I can say, well, I want to, I want to really feel the, him, him like taking his time on that last one. So I'm going to really, really slow into this. So he's building up to something, but what he builds up to isn't really another big move. It's a nice, slow, relaxed move. So that means we're going to need to slow out here, right? Rather than... So here I'm going to kind of play with the slow out. Right? As if it's a real piece of jelly, right? And then between here and here, I'm going to give it... I'm going to have it pop. I won't... Uh, I won't, so it's like, there, you see, you immediately slow it down. And you can put whatever personality you want in this, in this thing, depending on your arcing, your, your slowing in and slowing out, and your timing, right? So here again, right, here between here and here, you might say to yourself, well, I like it, but I feel, no, I've got to be able to find that pose, right? I feel that I want to, I want to feel the impact of this side a little bit more, right? So that we can do, right? Now, notice the shape of the squash and stretch that I'm adding in here, right? Notice the shape, right? So we go here like this. Now we're going to slow into this guy even more, right? But we're not going to slow out because we want it. Actually, we will need one, right? We will need one. Right? It'll be like this. That's it, right? So now let's see. So here you'll see the effect. Can you see the effects it's now having as we're going in, changing the speed of that? You can see him sticking to the wall, doing all kinds of things. So it's very important that for you to be able to do any kind of effect whatever it is you're gonna have to understand timing slowing in and slowing out and arcing super super important stuff that's gonna take you beyond this just simple basic movement and it, it'll start giving you texture and weight right uh, Mage Burger, I love pointing out that this guy is only 18 years old. He never stops to make me turn my head. Um, he hasn't given a YouTube link to this, so he's just showing off, you know. It's technically January the 2nd, but shush, this day is one New Year's posting I managed. So he started his quadruped lectures in the Intermediate Archive. Be mindful of the rear leg. It's going too, pointing too sky high. I don't have the, the slow down. You put it as a Facebook video. I can't frame by frame it. It's very nice made. You're clearly watching the video and learning. But just be mindful. I'm noticing this pelvis region of the leg. Just this Ed 209 style. You won't know what Ed 209 is. You're too young. Um, Pointing to sky high, I can see that you may have some issues in that there. Taking the anatomy out of the walk a little bit. But what I like is, is you're trying to get anatomy in the walk. 
That's what separates real animated training people from other alternate courses. you learning the anatomy of the walk, but there's an error on that one. To get that perspective, you're pointing too high uh, in there. Um, Gavin Silver, some nose ear uh, study in preparation for the head turns. I'm glad that you're doing this. You just keep doing it, okay? As I said, it's like the weightlifting analogy. Just keep doing it, Kevin. Um, Gervis. Gervis's Instagram, her drawing is getting e even stronger. Like the, the past few posts, I shouldn't really, it seems like I'm just favoriting uh, using these streams as an opportunity to just talk to Gervis about stuff that's nothing to do with her work. But I'm just paying some luck. I get lots of compliments. Why can't I compliment some of the people who reach out to me? Gerbis, the last few Instagram posts you've been drawing of that anatomical humanoid figure kneeling and crouching. Wow, lovely illustrative figure work. Loving those drawings. Here's my first take on a front run cycle on twos. After the last tips, I paid more attention to the movement of the arms and the downward movement of the pelvis. I think those work a bit better now, though I'm not entirely sure about the legs. Okay, let's have a look. You moved on to the, on to the um, run. It might be worth going back to the walk at some point, but let's have a look at this run. From the basics archive, she is doing these on twos looking a lot better than the walk yeah no i like it i like it and the leg you really feel the hip uh even without slowing it down i can feel the hip and the causing the the upper chain to react there's a nice figure of eight in the arms um as i mentioned i'm a huge dragon's lair fan uh and it's got that Dirk the Daring style uh, gait to the run. I, I love it. Um, no, this, this is an easier exercise than the walk. So I think you've pretty much bossed this. I don't even want to slow it down. Um, it, looks, it looks pretty good to me. The figure of eight is happening in the pelvis very clearly. Figure of eight is happening in the arms very clearly. Figure of eight is happening in the head very clearly. Yeah, pretty good. Put that on ones, it's going to look absolute um, dynamite. Good stuff. Nothing to say other than great. Dylan Doster. Dylan Doster, I tell you what. Um, Dylan's, I see Dylan Connors, uh, doing his own thing now. Posting his own, his own work. I think he's uh, doing some stuff uh, from with with Travis Blaze as well now, um, and so, and I'm looking at what he's doing and I'm thinking, well, I, I, some some of it, to be very honest, I can't quite understand. But uh, what it is is, I think Dylan has got his own personal style and his own personal goals, and that's great that he's doing that now. But what? But he occasionally comes back in here and shares his training library studies. And he's basically just, I was just blown away by this. I mean, when Dylan first started, he was struggling uh, with his drawing. Um, so Kevin Silver, this is going to be a good, uh, perhaps he wasn't struggling as much as you, Kevin. That's true. But this is going to be good inspiration for you because you tried to do the turnaround. I honestly, when people join my library and they start posting in this group, I, I kind of have a gut feeling that this person is going to be doing pretty bang on representations of my exercise. Uh, this person will struggle a little bit. This person will need a bit. I kind of have those inner thoughts to myself and I enjoy watching it. Dylan completely like hook kicked me from from out of nowhere because one minute it seemed like he was struggling and the next minute he was creating almost like as if they were like exact representations of my own exercises and I was like wow this guy is he's really and the thing is, is it isn't just a simple case of copying because 
To copy this stuff well, you have to understand the laws. If to do a turnaround like this, I'm going to hit play in a minute, right? You've got to understand how to arc. You've got to understand how to in between. You've got to understand how to keep volume. You've got to understand how to slow in and slow out. There's a lot of cheating of shapes where a lot of people have struggled on, on the feet of this one before. Dylan has bossed it all. Dylan is basically, he he's clearly knows how to do all these things. You're not going to be able to create as faithful a uh, representation of this by simply just watching a video and copying. He clearly knows what he's doing. So before I see, I love this um, comment by Charlene. Amazing job, especially managing those complex shapes. I'm just giving Dylan the praise he deserves here. D dang, Dylan, this is looking superb. Nice. Wow, this is looking solid. You see Kirbis commenting there. Akau, wow. Uh, Kirk Michael, good stuff. So let's have a look at it. Um, so you see he's first got the initial turn stage, which this is just fantastic, Dylan. This shows that you're at the level now where you can enter a production and, and you can clean up an in-between uh, to a very high level, I think. The fact that you can keep solid form and you can draw on model as well because this character is my woodcutter from Little Red and you 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 can draw this on model. Look at look at the um look at the the I'm just admiring this. Look how the the shoulder blades, the shoulder, the teres major, the trapezius, the latissimus dorsi, the sacrum shape, uh the gluteals shift around. Now the the cheat in the legs here is just gold. Like the the you the, the spacing, you've got the spacing perfect to pull the cheat off as we go into profile and come out. Dylan, this is this is um sublime. I'm gonna look at your hand shapes. Right? Yep. Gets a little small on this hand here, right? This is just um sublime, Dylan. You should be extremely proud of yourself. A little bit of the center line here is a little off. But you see, I'm really nitpicking. And you've really got the head, Dylan. Gets a bit big, gains a little bit of mass here. But otherwise, yeah, gains a little bit of mass here. Otherwise, you've really got that guy's head down. Again, gains a little bit of mass here, between here, a little bit too wide here. A little bit too thin here. Nitpicking here, but I have to, otherwise you won't improve. Uh, now he puts it on model. Wow. Like Dylan. That is that is to the model of my woodcutter. Um, I'm just going to dig mine out so you can just all see how good a job Dylan has done on this. Um, okay. Here's the... Here's the advanced archive trailer where we see this. So we have our completed our full solid turnaround. That's as far as we're going to take mine, the series. 15 right? lectures I've walked you through each and every. That's my, that's mine. This is my stuff as I'm teaching in the lecture. Dylan is following this lecture, right? To get it to 15 the same part level. lecture in the advanced. This is Dylan's. Isn't that nice? That is really really nice um i'm just gonna see your muscle your, it looks you've sold the illusion here dylan um so i don't really need to slow it down so much but i'm just gonna look at your musculature see your long head of the tricep your lateral head of the tricep turning into a bicep the, all the little cheats we learn here little bit of uh loss of form as you got the deltoid and bicep there uh but it's you know these things it's moving fast it's fa moving fast enough to get away with that the pants the cheat on the pant line there fantastic stuff um amazing work dylan um yeah i just uh, uh talk face, face to face, face with you, you. Keep it up, man. Um, that is one heck of a recreation of that exercise. Um, 
hopefully you're going to inspire some of the other members who are... I think Charlene said that she was having anxiety thinking about doing that. No need to have anxiety. Um, it's been designed for you, Charlene. It's been designed for Dylan. It's been designed for all of you to get to this level. And what I love about it is that systematically I'm proving that you can get to this level. So Kevin Silver, once again, just hang in there, man. You're going to get there, okay? You're going to get there. These these people of all different levels, Life Fantasy, Charlene, uh, Dylan, uh, Akau, Kichika, all these people, all at different levels, they're all getting there. So, you know, that's what I love about this place. It's, and having this community, as you can see, that it's, you know, it's more than capable. You're more than capable of doing this. So well done, Dylan. Well done. Yes. Right. Um, Mage Burger, I love this. Keep doing this uh, for your own character. See, Mage Burger, he's only 18 and he earned that free membership in the library. I did not ask him to do this. He says, I'm going to be doing a repeat 100 drawing exercise, this time with Snoops from the Rescuers. I'm going to do one drawing a day to make sure I stay with it. Kevin Silver, take note. 100 drawings of the same drawing every day. The main reason is because one of my characters in my cartoon is a fat guy in a hazmat suit. So I'm di dissecting the secrets that made the character like Snoops so appealing. Yes, Snoops is my favorite. Like Medusa is brilliant, but Snoops just makes me laugh every... What's that, man? I mean, he's just hilarious. And his acting. The skill of the nine old men. Yes. So basically keep doing this mage you're gonna accelerate i tell you because you're learning all of the animation from me you're learning drawing from me in the library but the one thing that you're gonna learn which has to be developed from your study is appeal and exaggeration which is what i was talking if some of you don't know what i was talking about go watch my breakdown of this character is talking about the secret the overlooked uh laws of appeal and exaggeration just because these are common words in human uh, society, they're very overlooked laws that don't mean what people think they mean. Okay, we have reached the end. Uh, this was all the last week's uh, stuff. So we have reached the end of uh, the uh, wall review stream. I already talked about the free uh, training library lectures available to anybody who joins this group in Real Animator Preliminaries. The passcode being here. If you want to join the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation, you can now do so. Uh, just go to ambanimation.com and you will be taken to this page uh, where you can read all about the great stuff. But you've been watching it happen, okay? The most important thing to read is who this is not for, okay? Uh, if you if this fits in, if, if you recognize these as being you, then... It's not worth it at all. Even thinking about it, just go away from the page, right? Uh, there are Udemy courses or other courses that you might like. Um, the training archives and entertainment archives are two very different types of uh, forms of study. Training are the powerful step-by-step -step things you're seeing people doing here that are like a course that really help you accomplish your goals. Edutainment are more like demos and streams uh, uh, that where you can watch. Other people like to call them courses and sell them. I call them edutainment. Okay, an example being um, a very powerful example, which is actually better than a lot of courses. But this is on sale at the moment. At the end of January, it will go to its uh, intended price, so you can get it at an early bird Christmas discount. Is my Octavio just got this today. Um, is my 56 part seminar series of how to animate your own uh, film where you watch me animate a minute and a half uh, of this stuff, Let's of this kind of quality of work. Over 56 episodes, you learn how I made this film. Now, the reason it's in edutainment and not in course is, is be honest with yourselves. If you're just a beginner, you're not going to be able to animate something of this caliber 
uh, just by following along to these videos. It's wishful thinking. So you're just watching me doing it as a live stream and sharing with you things along the way. You're going to learn a lot, but it's not a course. And you, you're not going to have those all important fundamentals. So that's why this is in what we call edutainment, right? All other edutainment, animation breakdowns, ask the animator drawing sessions and animation sessions, all done in a very similar way to what you saw me doing this drawing earlier, where you watch me draw and explain, or you watch me animate and explain. Edutainment, okay? Anybody else will uh, sell you a course like that? I want you to remember the word edutainment and just say, yeah, thanks for the edutainment. Um, the training archives is where it's all at. Basics, advanced, uh, intermediate, uh, anatomy and animation lectures, all simple stuff, balls, flower sacks, stick men, stuff that you can really follow along with as I do it. We now have two bundles. We have the Real Animator Training Archive bundle, which includes the basics, the intermediate, the anatomy and the lectures, saving the advanced archive for those of you who wish to pursue further study later and ensuring that you do not jump around these lectures as one or two people uh, have done so before to their dismay and then seen people in that group following the course as intended, getting better, faster results. The Master Animator Training Bundle is new. The Master Animator Training Bundle is for people who are purely interested in animation alone. You don't really care about the anatomy. You just want the powerful animation to... Uh, things in the library so what you get in the master bundle is you get the basics archive you get the intermediate archive you get the advanced archive you get the lectures archive but you also get the 50 the powerful 56 part series of how to animate your own film so that makes it a very kind of complete animator master bundle where you will um you will go through all of these uh, step one, the basics archive, step two, the intermediate archive, step three, the advanced archive, step four, the pick up and play lectures archive. And then so you're, you're going through the stages, you're learning everything. And then in the seminar series, how to make your own film, you practically then start seeing how to apply all of this stuff that you've learned. So therefore you go through the training and the edutainment is there to show you how it all works and how it goes together. You also get the animation breakdowns uh, and the animation sessions in there as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven archives uh, in the master animator training bundle, which is available to you. Um, okay, that's uh, the whole real animator training library uh, spiel over with. I'm going to come and chat to you guys, answer some questions, um, in, and then uh, going to end the stream. I see Octavio has a question, so let's get straight to it. Bum, 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 bum. Um, a and B, a little question. How can I get the most out of the edutainment film archive? I really want to make a film. It has been one of my goals since joining the real animator training should i try to follow along or just pick your brain no no you can follow along if you want but i don't think that that's really gonna help you what the edutainment what the make your own film archive is is it's an eye-opener octavio you see me make something from start to finish. I don't clean it up. I don't color it. But that's not really what we, what we care about. We want to see the actual secret stuff. Not what it all looks like at the end. And let's face facts. Coloring something in is a simple thing. that Any child of 15 could make a YouTube video. And teach you whichever software how to do it. Right? You want to know the, the real stuff. A.K.A. real animator training. Right? So... You have to understand is, is watching that will take you through the process of, okay, what's the challenge? The challenge is the film, right? So you then see how now, unfortunately, the storyboard element is vague because I did it very quickly and I did it as live streams. So 
But the most important thing is, is you see how I tackle the challenge of, okay, this is the scenario. How many characters do we need? How, what are the character designs? We think about the silhouettes. We think about all these things that I'm talking about. You then see how each shot could be like, you look at my, I explain why I storyboarded it that way for continuity. And I do touch on storyboarding at the very end. I do explain to you about how the editing and why we chose this angle and that angle and the other angle. So there's a lot of film theory being in there. Now, this content should not be consumed in its like like sitting down and watching like a TV show or something uh, unless you want to right for example you you have the challenge of the the what is the shot so you see how I work out the layout of the shot now layout is just shot composition but it's also the what the character's main poses and actions are which is what you kind of was going through with that little dialogue test that you did where you were kind of frustrated about. And I gave you a little taste of that with that scene, what you animated with that girl with the flower, right? So it's a lot of problem solving. How I solve those problems, how one shot leads into the next shot, the hookups, the continuity, why we should have it at a low angle, why we should have it at a, at a high angle. So a lot of this is explained. Then you have the animation. Now, you might have gone through the training library and you might be having all these tools that Dylan is demonstrating and all these things. But this is showing you the secret sauce, like the anticipations, the variations of arcs that make things feel more alive. A little thing like a head turn, a little thing like Santa stroking his beard, suddenly with these little extra hidden circular arcs, these little timing favor tricks and things. So all these little secret things being added, the double blinks being added in relation to the character specifically. They're not like, so we're thinking about the boys acting in relation to Santa's acting. So from an animation perspective, it's a real eye opener as to how a pro, how a pro or a real master animator approaches a scene which is very different to the way you do it in your training all right the training gives you the tools i always you know me i used to teach martial arts I always parallel it with martial arts so so you, you keep doing the strikes you keep doing the blocks so that you're they're there in your subconscious and there but then when you have to use them it's not like you're going through this systematic sequence you'll get you'll get pummeled right it has to instinctively be there and there so by watching this you will pick up the instinctive nature of how to favor when to use a third when to use a when to use a half um, should we have multiple timing charts on different body parts the importance of secondary action these things can be taught to you for you to understand them but not for you to grasp them. The grasping is, is more of a s process of your becoming. You're going through that process. But then when you're watching somebody do it at an extremely high level, like the scene where Santa's taking the biscuit and then taking the whiskey jar and the boys watching and looking, the whole thing's there for you. Now you've gone through the basics, the intermediate, the advanced, and you understand these 12 laws. You understand them, you know them, but you perhaps struggle to implement them. That's natural. This can't be got in, in a few years. This is years and years of mastery, right? So you're, ma you're attaining mastery. So when you watch these things unfolding before you, you suddenly start to feed your subconscious. So the next time you're going to animate an arc, Suddenly you'll remember, ah, when he did that Santa thing, he went down, he went back, he went up, and he went in a circle, and then he finished the settle with a little circle. Rather than just bobbing his head up and down, he did a circular motion. He did a circular motion that led into another circular motion before. So I could either anticipate and go this way before leaving the shot, 
or I could anticipate with a circle, a circle forward, a going backwards, and then leaving the shot. So, and it's those little things that add the nuances which separate the great animators from the mediocre. And you're watching it. I forgot how many shots, but there are so many different shots. And I explain the same thing in so many different ways. So the thing is, is when you watch it, 56 episodes is a lot. It's not like a Cobra Kai on Netflix where you really want to see. It can get boring at times. And you, you might be working along while, while you're watching it, which is what a lot of people do with stuff like that, which is fine. So I, I wouldn't necessarily do that. I would say... As you maybe as you're watching it, I would you can listen and then. But if you you listen to something that really what you want to hear, make a note of which episode it is and what it is. Santa's beard, for example, or the the, the layout of the room, for example. Episode five, the timestamp. Make a note to yourself. So that you know that that's something that you found really useful that you can come back. And you can refer to it. AMB was talking about shot continuity in this episode at this time. And I I know I mean I really learned from that, but I'm probably gonna forget it as we keep watching more episodes, right? It's natural, that's what happens. I'm probably gonna forget it. This is so long, it's so continuous, I'm not gonna be able to keep watching all of this. No one is. So it's important that you make a note of all the things that specifically meet those demands that you're looking for because there's a there's something of everything for answered in there we maybe didn't do storyboard as much as we could have but the thing is is it was a very ambitious project because i i wanted to animate something from start to finish for all of you um and for you to see how it was done and get and understand that okay now if i want to make my own content he's done it there obviously you were, if you're going to do your own film you should research and plan a lot better than what i did here this was just instinctive off the top live stream but i'm showing you it can be done right but you take what i do and you spend more time on it so if i say okay well we're going to design Father Christmas, and then we're going to design the boy, and we're going to think about the boy's room, rather than just like the way I drew the plan of the room and said, that's the room, right? You're going to spend a day, a week, you're going to think about the furniture in the room, you're going to Google tables and chairs, and think about the personality of the design. So you take what is in essence in my stream, but because I've had to rush through it, you put in the due diligence in that area. Remember, I have 20 years in some of these positions at the top of the game, head of story, animation supervisor, character designer, right? So I've worked in all these positions, hence I can shit it out. Now, when I shit it out, it doesn't mean it's it can't be better, but it's still level, right? You, on the other hand, are gonna be watching this thing, so you gotta take your time. But there's so much information in there. Um, if you feel following along with me helps in things that you think like that you really like the way I animated one of the scenes like the Santa and you want to grasp the arcs and the slowing in and slowing out, then try to follow along with me. It's not done in a follow along way, but I guess you can do it. People have done it before. They followed along with uh, videos that weren't intended that way. Uh, by pausing it but just make sure you don't make it a copycat exercise the training library isn't copycat because i've designed it to be follow along there's a difference i'm expecting you to follow along when i'm explaining it to you in those this one i'm not so i'm there's a lot of stuff being left out you just you, you will just end up drawing what i'm drawing but hopefully because of the things you've learned in the basics in the intermediate in the advanced um, your following along will be a little bit more informed, I guess. So it might be okay, right? The thing is that sometimes I, I tend to underestimate what people know. Uh, but, but, but I think that's a good thing because it ensures when you study from my courses that you're getting the information that you should be getting. So that's why I don't call these courses. Other people 
sell courses. I'm not going to mention any names where you just watch them do an amazing piece of work. Don't really tell you how and why, right? So the thing is, is like, I don't want, I want this to be different. I want this to give you the real results. So hopefully that'll give you an idea, Octavio. Um, it's, it's, should be very eye opening for you. Um, but there's a lot of content to consume. And most importantly, you shouldn't be rushed in or you shouldn't rush through it. You might rush through it, but if you come across stuff in there that you feel, hey, wow, that's, I need to take this in. I need to, I'm going to forget that. I need to write this down. I need to do a screen capture of it. I need to just make sure that that is, and that small screen capture I'll put on my phone in my Dropbox so I don't forget that. And then just work on that for a week, right? Okay, thank you so much, sir, for the guidance. I can't wait to tackle this next challenge. Well, yeah, if that's your challenge, I know that's one of your goals is to make your own film, so that's awesome. Dylan draws, uh, appreciating his uh, protocol that people are laying on him. Um, okay, so that's it. Not much in the way of chat today. So that's the stream pretty much done, um, I think. Uh, so I'm going to end it there. Uh, thank you, Octavio. That was a great question. Uh, it, it enabled me to... Sometimes by answering these questions, it enables me to have a better understanding of the material that I'm giving out as well. Uh, because while I pretty much know exactly what there is uh, to know about the 12 laws of animation and the content I'm creating, it helps me um, understand. Awesome advice on the pendulum thing again. Yes, Mage Burger. Uh, Whatever you do, mage, just between me and you, all right? You're growing up, all right? You're growing up fast. Information comes and goes fast. Those things, the proctor stuff, all of that stuff that I recommended you, don't... This is just my advice, okay? I know I'm talking like about... Like, but, but I feel like since you, you, you value what I say, don't forget that stuff, mage. That really is very, very powerful, not just for animation, but for for all of this. Because to be to be a, an artist, to be a successful artist, to be a successful anything, you've got to have the mindset, right? You've got to have the mindset. Skills are nothing without the mindset. Because the mindset doesn't know whether the skills are worthy or not. If you don't have that belief in yourself, it's like those really attractive people who are only consider themselves attractive if people tell them they're attractive. They don't know. They've got no substance. It's sad, right? You could be looking at a really beautiful person, but a very insecure person. It's the same with people with their animation work and their drawing. You may have amazing skill. You may have amazing work. But if you've got the wrong mindset, you're going to give off the wrong vibration. And it's that what people get, right? So very important stuff. Good man. All right, I'll see you all on the next stream. Uh, we're going to be returning to our Naruto fight breakdown. Uh, we're going to be uh, doing some more interesting stuff this year and hopefully busting out that muscle archive that everyone's waiting for. Okay, so I'll see you all on the next uh, AMB Animation live stream. Keep it real, people. Keep working hard. Over and out.